finally post processing that is probably the most easiest part what is post processing well that basically research, uh, refers to you know how we are how we are uh, you know visualizing the results and what type of engineering data that we take out of out of it now one thing that people usually focus on is okay when i'm getting a, when i'm running a cfd simulation they take colorful images you know they sh- people like to show off right but that is not the whole point of cfd for example when you're running external flow analysis you need to know how to compute drag coefficient you need to for example if you're simulating flow through a duct you need to figure out how to calculate the pressure losses right so these are the things that you need to calculate now let's look at the some uh, the fundamental equations so these are what you call as the governing equations in fluid flow so what are these equations when you look at these equations what are some of the mathematical characteristics of these equation that you can point out second order non linear pde correct so when you look at this uh, each of these equations represent a fundamental physics for example the continuity equation says mass is conserved x y z and momentum equations they are basically nothing but newton's second law applied to fluids this is basically saying that f is equal to ma and finally you have your energy equations which is a scalar equation because energy is a scalar and you're saying how energy is balanced in your system what is our system well our system is a very very small chunk of fluid the idea is if these equations are valid in that chunk those then you can actually integrate that and you can integrate it for a larger volume something like your car or something like your room something like a combustion chamber and the equations would still be valid so that is why you have to solve these governing equations in each and every mesh point so here for example we have a computational mesh so each and every volume here right i'll try to share the volume each and in each and every volume all these equations are being solved why is it important to understand the mathematical characteristics well there is a lot of significance first of all understanding the math or understanding what type of equations you are solving and understanding each and every term that you are solving helps you understand the assumptions that are going behind so for example let us say let us take euler's equations right so can anyone tell me what is the fundamental assumption in euler's equations but the problem is it's completely invalid right and if you do not take the time to understand the math and if you're just trying to solve it say that you are say that you are a good computer programmer then you will be able to solve it but if you don't understand the basic equation and if you don't understand the assumptions that go behind it you will make a lot of mistakes similarly the number of equations that you have do not stop with these five you have additional equations for example you might have heard of something called as k epsilon or k omega equations these are your turbulence model equations so if the navy if the navier stokes equations are good enough meaning if i am solving these equations then i'm balancing mass i'm balancing momentum and balancing energy right then why do i need special equations for turbulence to obtain turbulent viscosity right so this is a common misconception that when you need when you have turbulence model when you are you having k and epsilon for some reason there is this urge among students to think that okay since you have two additional equations you are getting more accurate information on the answer is that's not true navier stokes equations are perfectly capable of solving for turbulence for simulating and predicting turbulence very very accurately in fact that type of a simulation is what you call as a direct numeric simulation you guys might have heard of it right in direct numeric simulation also called as dns which is a much more popular way of calling it you solve the navier stokes equations as is but you have a extremely refined mesh okay you have an extremely refined mesh all right so basically to put it to con- to kind of summarize these set of equations is all you need for calculating uh turbulence but the problem is uh it's for engineering simulations it's impractical so you try to approximate turbulence in the process of approximate turbulence you do something called as the reynolds decomposition which is uh, i'm not going to go into the detail but at the end of the day these are your shear stress terms right these are your shear stress terms these shear stress terms gets replaced by what you call as the reynolds shear stress which is what viresh was pointing out as rij because that is a tensor so you get your reynolds stress and you have to approximate your reynolds stress you don't know how to calculate it for that you basically have a hypothesis saying that okay my reynolds stress is you know it is proportional to turbulent viscosity 
and you make up this viscosity, which is called as the turbulent viscosity and turbulence modeling or a viscosity based turbulence modeling approach is all about calculating this turbulence model or uh, calculating this turbulent viscosity. All right. Okay. So that with that, I would like to, there are, there are more equations, but, uh, <coughs> These equations are in the conservation form. What is the advantage of representing in that form? That's a great question. So when you basically do discretization, you have a lot of errors, correct? And when you are having equations in conservation form, from a mathematical point, there is no difference. Meaning when you, when you derive the equation in conservation form and non-conservation form in a piece of paper, mathematically, there is no difference. However, when you implement it, if you're, if you're discretizing using finite difference method, then you basically lose some of those conservation properties. Meaning if your code is finite difference, for example, and you're running a combustion simulation, say that you are simulating how compression takes place inside a closed cylinder. What would happen is though that system is closed, you will actually have mass loss. And in order to prevent the mass loss, your solver tolerances should be very, very small, meaning it's going to take you forever to basically get to the answer <coughs> to get a desired level of uh, accuracy in terms of mass loss and things like that, which is not practical for engineering purposes. On the other hand, if you take finite volume method, which starts with the integral form of governing equations, which is conservative, then the discretized form is also conservative because, uh, it is directly applicable. There's a one-to-one -one comparison. So it is inherently conservative. And because of that, <coughs> what's going to happen is your mass, momentum, and energy is going to be conserved. If you use a discretization scheme, which is inherently conservative. So Viresh, just by looking at the equations, if one form, one equation is conservative, or if it's not, if it is not non, if it is non-conservative, it doesn't matter. However, it matters how you're implementing in the code. When you're implementing in the code, if you're implementing it in a conservative form, then all those variables will be conserved even more. Meaning at the end of the day, you know, for example, if you compute these four terms, right, they should sum up to zero. But when you are using a computer, it will never be zero. It will be one E minus six, correct? This one E minus six, you can think of that as a source term for your continuity equation, correct? When you're using a conservation form, this error seem to be, tends to be very, very low, but for non-conservative form, what's going to happen is the error will, error will be higher and it will keep on accumulating. So for very sensitive simulations like IC engines, when you start, you have low errors, but when you end your simulation, you will have large errors.